Hey everyone, welcome to the Orthodox Christian Podcast, and we had a question come in through the form that I wanted to answer, but before that, just a disclaimer that I am not a priest in the Orthodox Church, so if you do have further questions, it's always a wonderful thing to get together with a priest in your local area and sit down for a coffee or something like that and just go back and forth with them, and I will try to answer this uh, to the best of my abil ability, but it is just my opinion, so take it for what it is. And without further ado, the question comes from Anne Greening. And uh, thanks for the question, Anne. And the question reads, could you talk about the Orthodox understanding of the Holy Spirit versus the Protestant understanding? I've read the Protestant general belief of the Holy Spirit underestimates what the Holy Spirit actually is and does. So thank you uh, very much for your question, Anne. And Protestantism is pretty broad, so it can be hard to speak specifically about what is or is not believed, but I think in general, my sense is Protestantism uh, takes some of the fruit or the conclusions of Christian history, but doesn't know where those conclusions came from. And so in Protestantism, one is taught that the Holy Spirit is divine, but it's thought that this is just coming from scripture itself and perhaps that it was even evident and clear from the beginning that the holy spirit was divine and part of the trinity but in the orthodox church there is more emphasis on what has been passed down throughout history and the necessity of the church to articulate what is revealed throughout the history that's uh, referenced in scripture, but it wasn't something, the divinity of the Holy Spirit, for instance, wasn't something that was just obvious and evident to people, and there were a lot of uh, arguments about that in church history. So I think that one uh, part of orthodoxy that's really helpful is just realizing that the uh, doctrine of the Holy Spirit comes down to us from history and from church councils, and it didn't just sort of spontaneously arise on its own. So uh, that's one thing that's a little bit different. Also, I think that within orthodoxy, uh, there is a helpful emphasis that the Holy Spirit is everywhere present and filling all things. And so insofar as something exists, it participates in the Holy Spirit of God because God is the one uh, who necessarily exists. God is existence itself and extends this gift of life to whatever we encounter that exists. And we can see an example of this in the Old Testament because God fills Adam or breathes into humanity and uh, allows it to exist. And the word in Hebrew as well as in Greek for spirit is the same word as breath and wind. And so when this happens, God breathing into Adam, it is God infusing Adam with the spirit of life so that he can be a living human being. And so this is true of the world as a whole, that all things are filled with God's spirit insofar as they exist. But then there's also uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are spoken of in the New Testament, like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And these have to do, I think, more so with uh, God increasing our capacity to cooperate with him on this path that leads to life. And so you've got this sort of general sense that all things are filled with God's spirit, but then you have a more specific sense in which God increases humanity's capacity to cooperate with him. And I think that, again, sometimes in Protestantism, it's more so just the second one that's emphasized where God will give people these gifts of the Holy Spirit and fill them at particular times, but there isn't necessarily as strong an emphasis on God's spirit filling all things and being everywhere present, which I think is unfortunate because it starts to potentially create a bit of separation between God and the world. Whereas in orthodoxy, I think there's a helpful emphasis on showing that the world only exists because it's participating in God at all points, and we can never escape from God. He is all around us and within everything that we're interacting with. And yet he is not the exact same as those things because those things are participants and God is the one that 
is existence itself. So there's that. Um, also, I think that it kind of depends on the Protestant tradition, but there are streams of Protestantism like charismatic groups or Pentecostal groups that will overemphasize the dramatic elements of being filled with God's spirit because in orthodoxy, the emphasis on being filled with God's spirit is to become a virtuous human person. Again, it's these gifts of the spirit that align us with life, that allow us to be integrated as people, like full human persons, but also allow the community to exist. This is what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to actually become a full human being. This is why Christ came, uh, not just to connect us with divinity, although this is very, very important, but um, actually to allow us to be fully human. Sometimes we think about uh, being human as something that's just granted and we either have it or we don't, but I think it's better to think about being a human in terms of a, a continuum and we can be more human or less human and we are more human when we are more aligned with God who is our uh, like our reason for existence to have communion with God and um, with other people and the other people are like a means to God like we encounter God in the other person this is why Christ says whatever you did unto the least of these you did unto me so I think within some of these streams of Protestantism sometimes there's an overemphasis on these like spectacular things happening when you're filled with the Holy Spirit such as speaking in tongues or prophesying or whatever else and God can certainly do things that are unusual or out of the ordinary but I think the regular mode of the Holy Spirit's operation is to make us virtuous people and when people like in these Protestant groups will try to refer to, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, account in Acts of the Apostles where the spirit is poured out and different languages are spoken at the day of Pentecost. They kind of miss the biblical background to this, which is the Tower of Babel, because when humanity tried to raise themselves up, God confused their language and they were scattered and divided. And so I think the point of Pentecost and speaking in these different tongues is to show that now there's one people of God that includes the Jews and the Gentiles, but they're all one in Christ and able to cooperate because the Holy Spirit is a spirit that integrates people and allows them to be on the same page, allows the community to exist. So um, sometimes in Protestant circles, we can get lost in the details and miss the bigger point that's being emphasized here. So I don't really think that the point of the Holy Spirit filling the apostles was just for the sake of speaking in strange languages as if that was an end, but it was for the purpose of creating this new people of God that was one and united in contrast to Babel. And then the last thing I'll mention is um, I think there are more symbolic interpretations of the spirit that are present within orthodoxy and much more natural. So when we read in the original creation account, it speaks about, like this is in Genesis, it speaks about the uh, wind of God or the spirit of God hovering over the waters. Remember that wind, breath, spirit, all the same word in Greek and in Hebrew. So it speaks about that and then uh, God speaks and the world is created. And so with the orthodoxy, it's very natural to interpret this as an allusion to the Trinity because you have God and you have God's spirit or wind or breath. And then you have the word of God, which is interpreted as Jesus Christ, the uh, logos or the reason behind existence, the rationality that holds things together, the wisdom that is with God in the beginning when he creates the world. And then we see this again at Christ's baptism because you have Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, second person of the Trinity. You have the Father saying, this is my beloved Son. And you have the Spirit hovering over the waters as a dove. So it's an illusion or a connection to the original creation. And you have the point being made that Christ is recreating the world through his baptism because he will overcome the power of death. And death will no longer be uh, something that floods and overwhelms humanity, but allows them to be united with God. So I think... My, my point in mentioning this is just 
when we read scripture from an orthodox perspective, these symbolic ways of engaging with it are very natural and in continuity with the church fathers because they read it in this manner. But within Protestantism, these interpretations, while um, acceptable, aren't natural in the sense that it's not the normal way that contemporary Protestantism engages with scripture because it is more, especially in an academic setting, influenced by just a historical critical method, which looks at what it meant as a historical human document and doesn't necessarily take that next step to show how this is something that God authored, but not in an arbitrary way, actually in a very natural way. So I think those are some of the ways that orthodoxy differs from Protestantism and both traditions of Christianity, they do worship the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is one of the Trinity, but I think that in orthodoxy, it's just a much broader understanding of the purpose of the Holy Spirit and fundamentally a more helpful understanding of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit fills us so we can be better people, more like Christ. It is not about these fantastic signs and wonders primarily. Although if God wishes, he can do those things and sometimes he does. And we have examples of that in certain monastic figures or church fathers who have a special grace of the Holy Spirit that is unusual, but Generally speaking, it's to make us more virtuous people. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any other questions about Orthodox Christianity, feel free to uh, go through the link in the episode description. And in the meantime, I hope that you have a peaceful week. Take care.